Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our daily devotions. Today we're going to be looking at Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 to 6. And in many ways this text is like the consummation of the entire scriptures and in fact of all of history. And it has some amazing comforting verses for us from God, uh, his word to us during this time uh, for us to look at. So, uh, I'm going to read the text here from Revelation chapter 26. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. So, first of all, What's amazing here is that John sees this vision of a new heaven and a new earth. Now, oftentimes when people think about eternal life, they think about some sort of concept where people are just floating around in the clouds for all of eternity. Maybe you've seen the pictures of, you know, sitting on clouds playing harps or something like that. But actually the Bible talks about how Eternity is going to be spent for those who believe in Jesus on a physical new earth. Jesus talks about the resurrection of the body. And so uh, the Bible talks about how God is going to make a new earth and he is going to uh, raise us from the dead. And for those who believe in Christ, he will give them a new body Uh, one that is incorruptible, one that death no longer has any dominion over, one that can't get sick, and we will live forever and ever on this new earth together with all believers and with our Lord Jesus Christ. Now it's amazing really to think about, you know, to think about the beauty of the earth, the beauty of God's creation, and to think about how we get to enjoy that and enjoy it with, without all of the bad things that we have in this world because of sin, because of the fall into sin. God says that there will be no more mourning, that is like no more weeping over uh, death, no more sadness, nor crying, pain anymore. He says death shall be no more. Our ultimate, our enemy, is death. You know, some people think about death in our world as though, well, it's just part of life. It's the way things work. The truth is, death was never supposed to be a part of this creation. Death was brought into the world by the sin of Adam, and and this world is, is decaying, and it is in this state of corruption. But we have this promise that because God has sent the new Adam, Jesus Christ our Lord, and he has died on the cross for the sin of the world, he has risen from the dead as the first fruits of the new creation. In him, we have this promise of everlasting life on the new earth. And what an amazing thing. The final thing to note here is that God says, It is done. 
To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. God has done this and it is his work and he offers it freely to you. He offers it to everyone who hears this word, this word of the gospel, and he truly desires for all people to have this eternal life on the new earth. And as we go through this suffering time, this time of tribulation, this time of trial, we need to keep focused on that promise and know that it is done. Our salvation is accomplished. And what awaits us as Christians is everlasting life on the new earth where we will live forever and ever with our Lord and with one another. The hymn that accompanies this text is the hymn, Jerusalem, My Happy Home. And it's in Lutheran service book, hymn 673. Jerusalem, my happy home, when shall I come to thee? When shall my sorrows have an end? Thy joys when shall I see? O happy harbor of the saints, O sweet and pleasant soil, In thee no sorrow may be found, No grief, no care, no no toil. Thy gardens and thy gallant walks Continually are green. There grow such sweet and pleasant flowers As nowhere else are seen. Their trees forever more bear fruit and evermore do spring. There evermore the angels dwell and evermore do sing. Apostles, martyrs, prophets, there around my Savior stand. And soon my friends in Christ below will join the glorious band. O Christ, do thou my soul prepare for that bright home of love that I may see thee and adore with all thy saints above. What a beautiful and wonderful and comforting hymn for us. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and glorify your holy name that you are always with us throughout our every trial on this earth. And we praise and thank you that in your mercy you have redeemed us through the precious blood of Christ and promised us that because he is risen, we too will rise to live on the new earth forever. As we look forward to that glorious day, keep us steadfast in your word and zealous to show your love in all that we do, that all the world would drink of the water of life purchased for them by your Son. This we pray through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.